When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. And by the way, we got two guests on today, our wives. This is my wife, Allison, and this is Matt's wife, Ashley. And we were just talking about how things were when we first started off. And Ashley was telling a story about Matt and how it was a struggle. It, it truly was a struggle. So the year was, what, 20, 2018? No, we were already in this house. It was, it was 2020. It was 2020, yeah. Um, at the time, Matt was just in the truck. He had a, his cousin and one other guy working for him. Um, and what, you were doing a water main? Yeah. So they dug out by hand this water main on the beach in Belmar. So nothing but sand. The soil is just straight Atlantic Ocean beach, digging, 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 digging. I mean, I wasn't there, so maybe you should be telling. No, I mean, it's just like when, so you got to be down four feet for the water mains up here because there's cold. Um, You got to worry about them freezing, but uh, you hit groundwater at about two feet when you're that close to the beach. So it's a struggle. We call it silly sand. It's like you're digging and it just keeps flowing back into the hole nonstop as you're digging and you got pumps sunk down. And it's a nightmare. Um, so anyway, we finally, we got down, I don't know, maybe, so we, we have a, a hydraulic mole so we can mole out the water lines mm-hmm. and then pull the line back. Um, but we shot it and it deflected off something and it went up to like six feet deep. So we finally get down like to the mole. It's six feet deep at the curb. Right. And we've been fighting water since we were two feet deep. So you can imagine the struggle and how dirty you are and sweaty and it's the summer. And um, I finally get down six feet. I find the mole. I'm like down in the hole, like bent over, like digging out, digging out, like trying to hook up, trying to hook up the pipe so we can pull it back into the house. And I'm just like, oh, I need a break. And I stand up. And the hole collapses on me up to my oh, chair. Nice. So dangerous. Um, the concrete slab next to the one that we pulled off slid over and it pinned me against like the next closest concrete slab. Um, and we didn't really know what to do. And Ashley got a phone call actually because my phone was in my pocket, so I couldn't get to my phone. So she got a phone call from my cousin and he was just like, he was young at the time. I mean, 2020, he was ago, yeah. like 22. So, like, he was still practicing talking, you know? You know, like, how your teenagers are just, like, practicing talking. Um, <laughs> like, when you call them and you're like, hey, what's going on? They're like, duh. It was kind of like, yes. <clears throat> it was kind of like that. Um, and, uh, and I'm home with a newborn baby. Newborn baby. Just wondering, why can't we pay our bills? And why (laughs) is my husband never home? Why does he not care about these three kids that are here? I haven't slept. I want to take a shower. If he, When he gets home, all I'm going to do is take a shower. 10 o'clock at night, I get a phone call from his cousin saying, everything's okay, but Matt's stuck in a hole. And I was like, oh, no. What? (laughs) He's like, all right, got to go. Bye. (laughs) Moral of the story, though, a few hours later, Matt did come home. We got him out of the hole, and no such thing as bad publicity. Am I right? Well, actually, you were sleeping when I got home. You were just like, oh, guess he's fine. <clears throat> um, but she actually, and then she was on Facebook, and it was a thing. Like, the fire department was there. Ambulances were there. Um, they had a drone in the sky taking pictures oh of the whole God. situation. Yeah. If I could find the drone pictures, I'll send it to you. Please do. Oh my god! And you were you were buried up to your waist. You said up to my chest, like here. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Yeah. Um, and Ashley's on Facebook, and 
you know, someone on like one of the local Facebook pages is like, hey, just wondering what's all the commotion going on on Surf Ave right now? You know, there's a lot of fire trucks and ambulances and someone else commented, person stuck in hole. <laughs> and the original post, <laughs> the original person that posted was just like, thank you. Like they didn't need any more information. <laughs> There's like a person stuck in a hole. Okay, thanks. We uh, appreciate it. <laughs> I can carry on about my day now. Yeah. <laughs> Just wondering. That makes sense. Oh. So yeah, no, I mean that's and like that was normal. That was just I don't know if that was necessarily normal. Like that was, that was <laughs> very at you being gone all the time. I mean, it was normal for me to not be home and her to be home with three kids. Yeah. Wasn't normal for me to be stuck in a hole with with the police well, and the firefighters have, with noose and five pictures. over the top of the head. Were your arms like pinned down in the hole with you? No, like, like they were rolled up down. in a carpet. So it was like I was bent down. I, I mean, like literally, I was like three milliseconds from dying. Like, Jeez. so we joke about it, and it's hilarious. But like, I stood up, and immediately as I stood up, the hole collapsed on me. So like, if I was bent down, and especially yeah. with you know, my cousin that didn't know how to speak. I don't know how he would have saved me. Um, what a good wing man to have around. Yeah. Well, I don't, I mean, the concrete would have just slid over my head and then you got to get the concrete out of there to even start. Oh digging. So it's like, um, oh, we have a visitor. It's a work meeting. Okay. Say hi and then go back upstairs. All right. Bo's going to say hi. Yeah, we're going to go back upstairs. Hi, buddy. Okay? We'll hi, leave right up. But we have a park upstairs. Okay. No. We'll be right back. All right. We'll be right there. It's an inside party. Okay. Go hang out with Quinn. Um, well, at least you can be home all the time now. Look at look at there. Yeah, look at this. Sorry. This is great. Um, right. But uh, no, it was like as soon as I like I just like stood up and I don't know. I was like, I guess I like probably took my hat off because that's usually what I do. And then it just like slid in on me. But it was like, the, dude, the funniest thing about it was so it's like we have the local fire department and then they have like special operations rescue units specifically for these situations because we're on the beach so like it actually happens probably like once or twice a year where there's a kid digging a hole on the beach they're down like four feet and mm -hmm. the sand collapses yeah. on them yeah um and they have to call the fire department and they have to like get dug out so the first fire truck shows up and the ambulance shows up and the cops show up and they're like, oh, we're waiting for special operations. We're waiting for special operations. And a, a friend of mine ran. So very small town, right? We're talking one square mile beach town. Everybody knows everybody, right? Yeah. So it goes out over the radio and it's like I, the mayor shows up. The head oh of the DPW shows up. The head of the first aid shows up. The head of the fire department shows up, right? Like. All these people that I know because they they know they all me. take a photo op and with you in the background <laughs> stuck and they were like, <laughs> but they all they all know it's me so they all show up because I know all of them and I have a good relationship with all of them you know, um, like I said very small town so like all of a sudden all these people start showing up and they're like, we can't do anything because we're waiting for special operations to show up, like oh, this yeah. is stupid and my friend Franny is. The uh, he ran the first aid. Actually, that's a funny story. So the first aid in our town, it was the oldest first aid squad in the country. Um, it was over a hundred years old, yeah. and they actually just shut it down like three years ago because they couldn't get the funding that they needed. But Franny shows up, and he's like, he's yelling at the cops and the firemen. He's like, "This is my patient. I'm gonna get him out of the hole." And they're like, "You can't do anything. <laughs> you just need to stop. We're waiting for special operation." So whatever. About 30 minutes later, the special operation shows up and they get the concrete off of me, but I'm still buried up to my chest in sand. Mm -hmm. um, they're like, all right, get the excavation equipment. And they go and they grab this bag and they set this bag down on the road. I'm like, finally, they're going to get me out of this freaking hole. I don't want to be a person stuck in a hole anymore. Um, <laughs> Facebook dude, star. No, dude, they literally, they open this bag and it's nothing but those two foot tall colored beach uh shovels yeah <laughs> there's like a pink one and a green I one and a yellow one and a purple yeah. one <laughs> they're like all right let's start digging 
<laughs> My kids have those. I know exactly. Yeah, what you're yeah, talking yeah about. the big bad firemen show up with the beach <laughs> shovels. I was like, we could have done this without you. <laughs> this is a <laughs> special hardware store. Been waiting on it's closed at ten o'clock at night, but we could have ran up to the hardware store. You're like, I have um, real shovels in the back of my truck. You want to grab those? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm I'm describing this sand earlier in the story, right? And it's it's literally like we call it silly sand because it's like you you dig out a shovel full of sand and 90% of it just flows back in from who knows where, right? Yeah. With, with the groundwater. So they start digging and they're digging for like a half hour. They couldn't get they couldn't make any progress to get me out of there. Then they're like, oh, we'll just hook a harness up to the ladder, right? To the ladder on the fire truck. And then we'll lift the ladder and it'll pull him out of the hole. And the first aid people are like, no, we can't do that. He'll dislocate his knees and his ankles uh. and his hips and his spine. Like he'll just die. Right. Like we're just going to stretch him out. He's so <laughs> stuck in this thing. Um, and then I was like, Hey guys, what if, uh, what if you just got the vac truck? They're like, what do you mean? And the, the head of the DPW at the time comes over and he, I was like, Mike, call Rumler, tell him to get the vac truck and he's going to stick the jetter hose in the sand and he's going to stick the vac, the vac in the sand and he's just going to make it wet and he's going to suck all the sand out of the hole so I can get out of here. And that's what they wound up doing at like freaking two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but I had to figure out how to get myself out of the hole. <laughs> Did one of them turn around and say, "Hey, I got a great idea!" Right after you said that, and yeah. say the exact yeah. words that you just yeah, said. DPW turned to the mayor. He was like, "I know how to get him out." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah. But that, it, you know, that was obviously like a very abnormal, crazy situation that happened. But it wasn't abnormal for it to be eleven o'clock at night and me not be home and her to be stuck mm -hmm. home with the kids. And I'm sure Allison can relate to that big time. Absolutely, absolutely. It was a we looking back, you know, just it was a lonely time and you don't even realize it. You know, I've said that before on my um, girls, mm -hmm. girls uh, Zoom that we've done. But, yeah, we've had we've been there, done that for many years, many years too long, I would say. Yeah. If we'd had somebody to help us along the way, we would have possibly listened to somebody's guidance. But, you know, you you go into business and nobody thinks of having business coaching or or even consultation for that matter when you're in the blue collar trades i just think that you try you do the best to feel your way through but if you come from a blue collar mindset all you know how to do is work your way out of things quote unquote work your way out of things and that's just not that's not how business should be looked at you know yeah and i think sorry no that's okay i'm not to work like that to work every day to work saturday to work sunday to work late right. to work early it, i never blinked i was just like that's just what he does that's how it works this this is what i signed up for yeah and i think when we saw real change was was when you know how they tell you you have to change your mindset you have to think you're a businessman and not think like a plumber and once tony made that adjustment in his head things started to change like real big changes you know well they were scary so. because they were counterintuitive and i think there has to be some kind of breakthrough where you just say this doesn't make sense to me right now because i'm used to working every day i'm used to working until i can't work anymore but i got to do something because it's not getting me out of the truck like you 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 have to at some point get yourself out of the truck because one truck with one person can only make so much of a living um, and you can't grow at all. And you just got to make time for a short period of time to make these incremental changes. And, you know, the most important is, is having yourself a, a flat rate price book that you can go by, you know, and, that's just an example of how you have to make some sort of change uh, and go with it, you know, actually go with it um, or else, you know, and, and I wish that I, somebody had told me that in 2006, because that's how long we've been in business. But I was working myself into the grave for 14 years, I think, 
And then I finally got this, you know, business coaching, you know, we found, we found MDP and we weren't, we weren't doing bad by, by any means, but we just weren't growing because we didn't know how we, we were, we were making it, but I was running it like a plumber. You know, I was still, still in the field, mm-hmm. still dressing like a plumber. <clears throat> you just can't. Yeah, it, it's real easy yeah. to make a living, right? Yeah. It's not easy to make a life. Right. right. Like it's, it's really easy to you can make money and you can pay your bills and, you know, and uh, but you're probably never going to see your wife or your kids, you know, and, you know, how many practices and games and everything that I miss because I, di- I didn't know any better. I just figured, you know, that's that's what my dad did and that's what his dad did. And you just miss games and you work. 15 hour days and seven days a week. And that's just the way plumbing is. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that you, or at least for us, it was everything takes a backseat to the business Mm -hmm. and uh, we can have the best laid plans for dinner. We can have the best weekend planned out, but if one phone call comes in vacations, we've come home early from vacations, Mm -hmm. one phone call that has anything to do with the business and you're right back in it trying to solve the problem. Are you making the money you could be making with your home service business? Or is there money slipping through the cracks? My free calculator is here to show you what your business could truly be earning. Simply answer a few simple questions and instantly you'll see a tailored result based on decades of industry data and hundreds of home service businesses just like yours. Check it out now. It's straightforward, entirely free, and an essential step for any home service business looking to boost earnings without the guesswork. Go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash calculator and discover what your business could be, no, should be making today. And it's my cousin just- has a good story about that. So he before he moved up to New Jersey or back up to New Jersey, I should say he owned a business down in Florida and they lived down in central Florida um, in Swanee County. And everything's he, he had a commercial contract called the Dixie grill. Um, and every Thanksgiving, the Dixie grill would call with a backup, right? Every single Thanksgiving, they, they were cooking Thanksgiving dinner for all these people. Um, and they, they would back up every single Thanksgiving to the point where they just started having Thanksgiving dinner at the Dixie Grill because he knew he was going to end up there anyway. And at least he could then somewhat have a Thanksgiving dinner with his family. And then they would just come out and they'd tap him on the shoulder and be like, hey, you know, when, when you're done eating your biscuits, we, we got an issue in the kitchen, you know. <laughs> Sorry um, to bother. And, yeah. And isn't that crazy? Like to literally have Thanksgiving dinner at a restaurant because you know that restaurant's going to call you with a backup. Yeah. Like that's yeah. what we allow. Oh, that's what we used to allow plumbing to do to our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it becomes accepted mentally, just like, like we have this drawer in our kitchen right now that I should have fixed a long time ago. But every time you try to pull it, it's, it's got all the, the, the pans in it that we use. So every time you try to pull it, it's like, Oh, it's such a grind. And it's like, I've been doing it for how long has that been? A long time. I mean, Years like, now. And all it would take is just a little focus and a little preparation and or finding somebody to fix it. But <laughs> it's just part of our lives. We've come and, to accept this drawer. <laughs> and that's what happened. We have a few jaws like that. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that's what happens whenever uh, off the top of my head, it's like you don't have to answer the phone at, 10 o'clock at night because you're scared you're going to miss a call or you you know you don't have to drop everything that you're doing every time the phone rings i I keep going back to the phone because that was probably the biggest the biggest thing to to let go of when i was making a transition to like kind of from being the plumber that everybody talked to to being the business owner and you know empowering people comes along with that too like i flash forward i mean i have a team of people that is empowered and they really don't need me and in fact i get in the way sometimes you know and they are intelligent intelligent people that that have responsibilities they know their responsibilities and they can do it but on the way to getting to that point i micromanaged a lot i 
overstepped a lot. I didn't think that I could leave people alone because they would make a mistake. And that drove a lot of people crazy. And I can see why, like who would want to work for somebody that, um, gives you a task and then breathes down your neck to, to make sure you get it done. But you know, that's part of growing. Like if you're a one truck operation and you hire somebody, you are going to screw up a lot. It's not like you're going to hire somebody and then be the perfect boss, you know, but you have to hire somebody to, to get there. Yeah. And they will help you along the way. They will, um, your time will become multiplied when you, create a team. And I think that I, I just, I just really undervalued being able to uh, delegate and, and grow a team because you can't do it. It just doesn't work. You can't do it by yourself. You're not, you don't really have a business. If you're by yourself, you just have a job that you're responsible to a bunch more bosses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so Can I sidebar for a second. Cause I just realized you're wearing your master shirt. Yeah. Which, yet again, we, we've actually we've actually talked about this on the podcast before. How you you submit for the uh, the lottery every year, and you've never gotten it right. Um, absolutely not. The hope's still alive, but I've absolutely never never won the lottery. So we we were yes actually yesterday we went to the country club to meet our friends for a couple drinks for lunch, and uh, the bartender there, Jose, was like, "Oh yeah, I went to the Masters this year." And I was like, whoa, you like. Did you, you pull him the- in close and be like, what? I was like, you won the lottery? He's like, no, my friend won the lottery and he brought me. And I was like, that's what oh, Tony's yeah. going to do for me when he wins. <laughs> it's so great. I'm, that's such a great friend, right? So, You've got a lot of confidence that I'm going to win one day because my confidence <laughs> level is super low. But this story, though, he tells us. So there's an interview and we'll send you the interview when we find that's it. Hilarious. Um, But. Jose's like, he's, he's a bartender at the country club. So he's like, I work till midnight on Wednesday and it starts on Thursday. Right. So I worked till midnight on Wednesday and then I went to the bar and left the bar at 3 AM. He's like, then I had to be up at six for my flight. And he's like, and I don't really like flying. He's like, so I ate an edible. Oh, a very big edible. <laughs> Like a Joey Diaz caliber edible. Like a Death yeah, Star. I don't know how those work because I don't do it, but it, he was like, it was 100 milligrams. I was like, that sounds like a lot. I don't know. That does sound like a lot. So, And just picture Jose. He looks like the caddy from Happy Gilmore, just with curly hair instead of straight hair. Um, and, the homeless uh, caddy? Yeah. That's what I'm picturing. <laughs> yes. Yes, that caddy. Um, but then he lands at augusta regional whatever that augusta rose i think it is um I, he, you know i wouldn't know <laughs> <laughs> he lands there he walks off the plane and there's a news there's well there's a pretty girl like waving at him like come here come here come here <laughs> and he's like oh this is the best place ever <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm greeted by beautiful women this is awesome and he gets up there and it's a news reporter that wants to interview him for the news <laughs> Oh. Yeah, we need to and see this. He couldn't speak. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, she was like, "What are you? What are you most excited about this weekend?" He's like, "I'm just gonna eat the most pimento cheese sandwiches I can." <laughs> <laughs> was he still super high from the edible? Yes, yeah. it's a two. Hour, it's like a two hour flight. <laughs> of course, he was. <laughs> oh, it was so high on Sunday when he got home. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, but yeah, yeah, I just realized you're wearing your master shirt. That literally, oh, yeah. we, we heard that story yesterday. They showed that us the interview. Saw, yeah. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. My friend who went to the masters called me and asked me if I wanted a shirt, and it was bittersweet because I would have much rather been there buying my own shirt. But I, you know, I do well, have buddies nice. that, that will bring me you. shirts, and I had another buddy that bought me some some highball whiskey glasses for the masters this year. Which was awesome. It's, I feel like a charity case. You know, they come <laughs> home with all this swag and they're like masters hats and shirts. And see, so you call them friends, but what kind of friends are they if they didn't invite you? <laughs> well, it's <That's> true. <laughs> you know, you really put me in a bad spot here. You know. 
Oh, you really think they're one of our 300 viewers? It's okay. You can be honest yeah. here. <laughs> no, I, yeah. <laughs> Odds are they're, they're, they're not going to hear this. Um, but I mean, that's, you know, if, if you won the lottery next year, cause you can't win it this year, it's passed already. But if you won the lottery next year, you would be able to take off that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and go to the masters, right? Like you yeah. have that mm-hmm. flexibility now because you put the, the systems in place and you have the people in place to run things when you're not around. Yeah. And you just have to, it's not a, it's not a easy thing to do. It's, it's not like nothing about growing is easy. It's, you know, you're full of anxiety. Is this going to work? Is this person going to work out? Uh, is the system that I've put in place? Sometimes, you know, we run into talking to to some clients and just people in general where they they want to perfect the system before they pull the trigger and bring somebody in on it and and it, it just doesn't exist like the systems are going to be flawed but you as the business owner can uh, pinpoint that and fix things along the way there's no such thing as a perfect system um, but there is good enough you know there's good enough to pull the trigger and let's get going you can't just you can't just come up with reasons not to do it because that's the that's the easy thing to do is just and the com- everybody likes stay in their comfort zone you know yeah and it's the same logic that causes people to say oh i can't find you can't find good help mm-hmm. well i mean that's not true people do it every day <laughs> We were talking to one of our private clients right before the retreat and, you know, they were so nervous. They had never left the company before. Um, They, you know, they want to be there. They want to be working. They want to be answering the questions. And our advice to them was something is going to go wrong. Like, don't go into this thinking it's going to be flawless. You're not going to get a phone call. Some system's not going to break. Something needs to be fixed ASAP Monday morning. Go into it knowing that's going to happen so we can put a system in place so it doesn't happen again next time. Because we don't know what that problem's going to be, but we do know we have the tools through MDP to make a solution for the problem that is coming. And there's so much freedom in that, just like having that wherewithal to know it isn't perfect yet, but it, it's so much, we, we've come so far from where we were mm-hmm. that we can take Absolutely. those risks. It still doesn't feel good to take a risk, but we have all the evidence to prove that taking the risk works. Yeah. And you've right. gotten through a hundred percent of the things that have happened to you thus far, or you wouldn't be here. You know, and what's what's the bigger anxiety, worrying about something that's going to happen or having the mindset like you just said, Ashley, of, yeah, something is going to happen. Our business revolves around solving problems. So we can't be shocked when a problem arises, you know, and and it may not be a plumbing problem. It may be a personnel issue. It may be a a automobile a tech gets in a, a automobile accident things are going to happen. So you can't, that's, that's a, that's a really good point that you can't just go into it saying, this is going to be the trip I take where nothing happens. I mean, stuff happens all the time, especially when you're getting ready to go on a trip. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is at all. Probably the same thing that happens when you, when you hire a technician, I mean, makes the phone stop ringing. I don't know, but you got to know that and you got to push through that. And I think that that's what holds 99% of people back from making a big decision is they don't, they don't want the uncomfort. Yeah. Well, look at us now, right? Like you put in the systems, you hire the people, you do all that. And the four of us here, here on a Thursday, having this conversation um, because we're able to be. Yeah. You know, and, and if you went back two years, I'd be under a sink. And she'd be in an office 15 miles away and the kids would be in school and we would get, we would come home and it would be like, how was your day? Good. How was your day? Good. All right, let's eat dinner and go to bed. Right. Um, Yeah. And you make these high valued. um, I heard Jeff Bezos say one time, the, the leaders in an organization are most valuable for making these 
a couple of high value decisions, maybe a day, maybe a week, but those high value decisions to pull the trigger on service Titan or hiring a, an answering service or something that is going to generate money and either save your team time, save your team effort and push them further along. Because when you make, when you make decisions like that, that change the trajectory of your business, it also changes the lives of the people that work with you, you know, um, adjusting your prices to actually make a profit and to, to, to not go in the hole and you, you don't even know you're going in the hole because you're so busy out on the road. You just work and work and work and you, you don't have time to, to pay as you go. So your invoices stack up on your desk and you think you're making money. And then all of a sudden you have to pay the supply house and now you don't have any money. So if you go through that roller coaster enough, my hope is that you will get tired of it and you'll want to figure out how you can, get off of that financial roller coaster and actually make it um, better for you. And if you have employees, you are responsible for making it better for them. Mm -hmm. And that's a big responsibility. And one that I don't take lightly. And I know you guys don't either. And it's important. It's important. You can't, you can't do it if you're in the truck. No, it's impossible. There's just too much to do outside of the truck to be able to do all of it and be in the truck right yeah you could probably manage one or two techs and be in the truck and your life would be a complete nightmare but anything more than that it's just going to be you have you have done that <laughs> for years yeah. Yeah. yeah for years and years yeah yeah but th there are good people out there that can help you there are there i'm not perfect i make mistakes my the people on my team make mistakes but we don't uh we don't let that hold us up from making high value decisions and going forward with them. And if you, if I would just challenge people to, to make a decision like that and move forward. And even if it's the wrong decision, at least you made one, you know, you can always get yourself out of a bad decision. Finding and hiring the right tech for your team can be challenging. Applicant pro makes it simple and easy. Your personal applicant pro hiring professional will do the brunt of the work for you. Writing job ads that will get you maximum applicant exposure. Manage the advertising of your jobs to over 20 major and local job boards. Even a pre-hire risk assessment is included to ensure your candidates match the role expectations and your company values. To learn more about applicant pro and to take advantage of special discounts just for Coach's Corner listeners, go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash applicant pro. So, so I have a full circle Facebook story that I think really ties all of this that we're talking about today together on Friday. And we, we shared this with you guys on Friday. Yeah. We what had a, a Facebook comment come in on the local Facebook group, just had Belmar plumbing out. And those guys are such a ripoff, so expensive. They want X amount of dollars to fix my toilet. Is that normal? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. And we saw it and we're like, not going to let it ruin our day. You know, people are going to say what they're going to say. And then it was five comments, good and bad. Then it was 20 comments, good and bad. Go have lunch, come back, <laughs> clean the kitchen, 50 comments. And again, a mix of good and bad. This post got 120 comments. Like now everyone, now you know the algorithm. Belmont too. So we were we were stewing over it a little bit just because the rate of which the comments were coming in, and I was like, you know what, I have to do something. I'm not. We did message her and we did apologize that we weren't able to meet her expectations. Um, she didn't like that about us, but we moved on. So I made a Facebook post of my own, and I just introduced myself. I introduced Matt, and I said. Um, I grew up right here in the community and Matt is a third generation plumber and he cares more than anything. He cares about his family. We have three kids and if we're not at work, we're at lacrosse practice, football practice, cheer practice. And that's the most important thing to us. And I said, you know what? We're not the cheapest guys in town anymore. We don't bend over backwards. We don't work 15, 16 hour days just to keep the lights on. We sat down with a business coach and we know what we're supposed to charge. 
if you don't want to pay that, if you don't want the service that we're providing, where we show up the same day, we give you three options, everything's automated, your problem solved and move on. If that's not what you're looking for, that's okay. If that is what you're looking for, I can guarantee you our technicians are the best of the best. <laughs> we pay them extremely well. They have health insurance. They have benefits. They get to go home and see their kids. They're young men and women just like you. They want to buy a house just like you. They want to go out to dinner in the community just like you. But if that's not what you're interested in, that's fine. Move on, move along. Um, so we were on a high from that post all weekend. <laughs> we're up to 652 likes on the <laughs> On my post, that's all. Awesome. Twenty positive comments coming in. Um, there was two that weren't positive, but you know what? Oh well. There were so many more people talking about the good that we're doing, and and it's our reason why. It's our family. It's our kids. Mm -hmm. It's it's to give these guys that work for us a good life. Um, so I'm way happier to service those people than to serve the young lady who thought we were way too expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Such a good story because there are always, you always tend to remember the bad reviews over the good reviews, even though you have a ton more good reviews, you know, and that's just the way the world is now. People gravitate toward negativity. And when you provide value in a blue collar trade like this, I mean, nobody wants to spend money on a plumber from the get go, but when, when they realize what they can get for that money, it's my hope that, that they'll see the value. And I judging by all the likes you got from the way you kind of responded in a positive way, in a professional way. I mean, I think, I think it speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and it, it is important to point out that like, Y'all are like us. We care about our employees. We care about their quality of life. We care that they have time with their families. We don't have employees that are on call, you know, for a week at a time like that to take that, be able to give that to somebody that freedom as well as it means everything, you know, and I, and I, I know that they value that. And we don't want our team of people to go through what we had to go through, you know, that they're not the owners of the company. They, they, trust us to run a business that can keep them secure. And the last thing I want is for them to have to go through what we went through, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so if, if dealing with a bad review and I've, and we've gotten our share of bad reviews uh, on Google, we've got over a thousand reviews and we still have a 4.7, but it's the bad ones that, you know, you, you really want to just sit down and have a conversation like, Hey, you're burning us. You're burning us here in, in public, in the court of public opinion and you didn't even have a conversation with us. And a lot of times their perspective is there's way more to it. Most, mm -hmm. most of the time, there's way, there's more, to way more to it. Most of the time, no it's, idea. it's the time money exchange. You know, yeah. it only took us X amount of time uh, to get the job done. So therefore we must be charging $50,000 an hour. So this is, <laughs> this is an outrage, you know, and that's just not it. But it's you can't all jobs too, right? Always. Yeah. It's always, it's always this. Yeah. yeah. But that's not going to change. So we just have to respond to things in a professional manner. Um, Google is a little bit different than Facebook, but if somebody engaged you like that on Facebook, I thought that was just an excellent response. And mm -hmm. it made me, made me a big fan of Belmar. Even if I didn't know who you guys were, it would be like, wow, like, she stood up for her family. You made it text. human. You you yeah. put a state like you put a human heart behind your your company. Mm -hmm. and, and people and it forget is. that. Yeah. yeah, and it is absolutely same here. We you know this was started with a, a dream of of his that yeah. we made happen over the course of our marriage. You know. Well, and I think it looked like if if this was if this was a universe where we could say things and it wouldn't there would be no uh, repercussions. You would say, is that what you want for me and my company? Do you want us to, to be uh, dirty and poor and sweating and never spend time with our families? And the answer is yes. That's what we want. <laughs> we want you to fix our problem for dirt cheap and get out of my house. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, 
That's you dirty, what you dirty bastard. <laughs> that's what some customers think. Yeah. I love all of our customers that appreciate us, and I and I, and we I, have so many awesome customers too. Yeah, that mm-hmm. do, do that do value what we the services we provide. Yeah, you know. All right, I think we should probably get out of here though. It's uh, yeah, that was a good conversation. Yeah. Thank you, ladies, Good for, to joining see us. Y'all Thank as, you for joining us. As me. always. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. All right, well, that does it for this episode of The Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below, and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.